Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be posted to our website for um, in our archives for you to watch at your convenience and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of our shows. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, uh, similar to your state library. And so we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live from, um, for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera, special libraries, uh, museums, um, anything and everything. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, many training sessions, demos of services and products, um, all sorts. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on sometimes to do presentations about um, services and programs we do here through the Commission, but we also bring in guest speakers sometimes, as we have this morning. Um, with us today is Melanie and Kim, who are going to talk about um, health resources for libraries, some great work they've been doing, some great resources they have available. Um, and I'm just going to hand it over to both of you to um, introduce yourselves more fully and tell us about what you've been working on. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for coming this morning and taking time out of your day to see this presentation. And this is going to be on expanding the health information landscape in your public library. Um, I'm Melanie Newell, and we also have with us Kimberly Rothgeb. And we are both a catalyst for community health fellows. Uh, and we attend the University of Missouri Columbia in a master's program that's been funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And oh, it's not going to the next slide. Why not? <laughs> you should be able to just try and just click on it somewhere and um, then maybe use your arrow keys if those will work. There we go. There it goes. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there we are, and that's our contact information. Um, I work with Lincoln City Libraries as well, and so I've been there um, getting close to eight years. And uh, Kim, you work at, at UNMC. Right, I'm the Education Program Coordinator for a PhD program for biomedical research at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Wow. And I both have um, some library experience and some medical experience that we bring to the table. And then we've been in this graduate program for a couple years now. Yeah, that's weird that the slides aren't advancing. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're good. So the program that we've been doing is called Catalyst for Community Health. And I really love these Catalyst programs from uh, the Institute of Museum and Library Services because what they kind of do is pair people with mentors and make it very community-based um, so that you're getting education and mentorship that you can directly apply to your community. So the model is really inspiring, and I just encourage people to follow the Catalyst programs from IMLS if they do any more, um, just because I think they're pretty neat. Um, this just shows who our advisory board is. You might know some people on our advisory board. Mm -hmm. So we are doing... for anyone who is trying to read like all of that on there. That's a lot of text to read just yeah. right now. We do have a link to that um, page with all the information about the group, about what you were doing in the um, show information too. So people can go ahead and yes. read that all later if they want to know more. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, so our studies have been a cross-disciplinary focus. 
So we've been doing not only library and information science, but also medical librarianship, classes on public health, and health informatics. And all of us have been developing community partnerships between libraries in our communities and health agencies, um, and also developing lots of health resources for libraries. Um, we've had the guidance as well of a wonderful group of mentors and the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about today, uh, that has a wealth of resources for uh, anyone working in any type of library where they might have uh, health or medical um, things to do. So we're gonna be talking about expanding health in public libraries. And I wanted to just take a second and I wonder if folks in the chat can just briefly say um, who you are, maybe what type of library you work in, just so we have a sense of who's, who's all here today. Sure, yeah, if anybody wants to go ahead and type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface and just uh, let us know if you're in a public, uh, what kind of library it is. Um, and I will cut that open over here, there we go. I do know, oh, uh, all right, cool. We've got someone from the public library in New Jersey. Welcome, Kenzie. I know we have a couple of people from public libraries here in Nebraska. I see their names in the list and I know. <laughs> Just to get a sense of who's here and why people are here today. Um, so you can continue to, sh to share that if you'd like to, um, like to mention. Yeah. And then there's so. Rose who's at um, our La Vista Public Library here in Nebraska, and they share a building with their community college. So that's an interesting, they've got oh, yeah. um, a lot of I've people. been there. I love that model. I wish we had that here in Lincoln. <laughs> they said my, that dream, she... my dream job, but we'll see. <laughs> you have a few libraries like that in Nebraska that have a shared space like that or, or share that they can really work together, I think, on a lot of things. Yeah. So I wanted to just touch on as a beginning here um, why it's important to have health empowered librarians in libraries and communities. I know that librarians are constantly sort of asked to do more and more and more. Um, so this is just another area where unfortunately um, our job requires us to develop some, some expertise. Um, but 73% of those ages 16 and over say that libraries contribute to people finding health information. And 42% of those who have gone online at a library have done so for health related searches. And so that comes to 10% of the full population 16 and older. Um, and a reminder that roughly 10% of Nebraskans are uninsured. Um, so they may not be running directly to a doctor for health information because they can't. Um, so the, the take home point there is that your patrons are seeking answers to their health questions in your library. <laughs> um, whether you know they're doing it, whether you've had much to do with it, they are there looking for those answers. And so just briefly what we're gonna kind of cover today, so you have an idea of what direction we're going in. Um, we wanted to talk to you about uh, addressing those health questions in the library. When they come your way, uh, it is good to be prepared and know where to go. And we hope to make that a little easier for folks today. Um, want to talk about some resources for you in ordering um, more books for your library that may be related to consumer health and health issues. Um, and we'll also talk about health um, information through displays, uh, different types of pamphlets, brochures, things like that, that you can get for your library for free, and also health programs and partnerships. And we'll touch a little bit also on community data 
uh, related to health. So how you can gauge what your community's health issues are. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some, some, a grab bag of lots of things for training, funding, and more support with this issue. Hey, there my enter button worked. I don't know why, sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. Um, so as we go forward with our presentation, um, this is from uh, DHHS and their annual report, just kind of summarizing some of the things coming from the annual report that these are Nebraska's top health priorities and challenges. So these are the things that might um, direct what types of health information you provide, health programs you might be providing, because these are our, our big top five here. And can everybody see those hopefully? Mm -hmm. I don't think I need to read each one. So that'll kind of give us some direction as we go forward of things to think about uh, as you're developing ideas. And that this is about your library and your community. So is there a health challenge that you're aware of that might need your help? Um, so it's good to focus on what, what your community needs. So just briefly, we'll touch on where you can find community data if you're not aware of what, what your community's health biggest health issues might be, even though you're probably aware of that, you can look at um, the community health rankings and roadmaps. And you can also look at your health department's community health improvement plan. So every three to six years, they should be making a community health improvement plan. That will really lay out what has been identified as your community's um, top strategic uh, issues that that they're wanting to focus on and spark maps is another one where you can um, create very easily a map or a chart that's wonderful to use uh, for grants and we'll touch on that a little bit later so if you're not sure what to do these are some great ways to to get started okay Addressing health information in the library is a big challenge. I think some of those, you know, more complicated issues that require more expertise, like legal reference, business reference, and health reference are really difficult things to do. I know as a public librarian, you know, kind of that entry level, um, we don't have a whole lot of training on it or things that come our way all the time. So we get those health questions and they can be hard to answer. Um, so we're gonna go over some things today that will assist you with that. Um, and you might not know what some of these things are, but we'll go through them. And then I wanted to point out to everyone, there's gonna be a link, I'll share it in the chat. It will also be on this page for this webinar to a, a toolkit that Pretty much everything that we're going to talk about today is listed in this toolkit and uh, you can use that to go back to things that you, you like from today's presentation. Um, it's got everything in there. We'll show it later too. Okay. And I did have a couple of take home points for people. So if someone has to leave early, these are a couple things that I wanna make sure people uh, know about. And Kim, did you wanna jump in and talk about these? Well, you've got a couple of really great options available to you. Of course, you've got the Network for the National Library of Medicine. They have an amazing amount of resources along with some education opportunities. And we'll talk more about one of the certifications coming up. Um, one of the other things that you may not know about is locally within each of your states, many of them have your university's medical center. And, and just probably about 99.9% .9 of them all have libraries. And your librarians in those places are wonderful resources. Just for an example, here at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, we have through the McGugan Library an option for patients and families to go to our website, 
you can go to the link in the upper right hand corner and you can fill out a form asking the librarians here to help pull reliable information for you on any health topic that you can possibly need. There's even a specific spot just for cancer type of research. You enter in your information, it's a free resource. They will compile an entire packet of information for you and for any patient or family member, and they can email it or mail it to you. And so that's just a free service that we offer here in Nebraska for anybody that needs health information. And then um, Kiara Comfort, she is the National Network of Libraries of Medicine Education and Outreach Coordinator for Nebraska. She's out of Creighton. And I have um, emailed and worked with both Kiara and Christian to come up with the ideas for this presentation. So it's not all, you know, this isn't all about me and my training and our training. Um, I used my local health librarians to help me come up with resources and they will help you too. And then lastly, I did want to just show everyone the toolkit that uh, comes along with this presentation. And so I'm gonna navigate to that here. So bear with me for a moment. Hmm, that is so strange, my keyboard won't go out of this. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. There we go. I don't know. I just have to hit harder on the keyboard, I guess. I don't know. Weird. Okay. So this is the toolkit that you're going to have access to. And it takes a while to load ever since I added a picture in there for some reason. But everything we're going to go over today is in this toolkit and I um, encourage you to use the outline view so that you can see all of the resources that will show up. There it is. Sorry, it's taken longer to load ever since I added a picture. Um, so everything we're going to talk about is here in this toolkit. And there's a lot. There's a lot of links and a lot of resources and we'll kind of go over what all of them are. So this is something you can return to at any time. Um, come back to this. Everything's there in one place for you. OK. So we also wanted to point out that there's a consumer health information specialization. You can um, get more training on how to answer health reference questions and work with customers regarding uh, health information in your library. And it's through the MLA. And this is some of what um, you will learn through that specialization. Kim and I both have one of these. And also um, within the toolkit, there's a way that you can apply for them to pay for this. So normally it's like $55 if you're a member, $75 if you're not a member, um, but you can apply for a scholarship and most people who would apply for one will, will get one. So you can really get your consumer health information specialization for free. So if you're someone who really wants to expand uh, your expertise in this topic, this is a wonderful, way to do it and you will really come out um, being an expert. Yeah, I know that for both Melanie and I, we walked away from that training with just a whole lot of better understanding of where to find information. How do I present that to the patrons? Where can we do with that? How do I look at some of the legal things? How do I increase health literacy? That's a big part of what we talk about is how do we look at that literacy component? Because not everybody understands when you get into some of the medical jargon that happens on a daily basis. You walk out of a doctor's office and they hand you a packet with terms on it you may not understand. This class has really helped us to be able to say, how do we talk with patrons to say, here's how you kind of work through some of that information and where to find better sources for that. Definitely. Uh, um is a great training. The hard part about it is it takes your time, but you can do it over a long course of time as well. And you get a really cool certificate when you're done. I love certificates. <laughs> so
So the first line of defense and expanding the health information landscape in your library is you, um, your staff, uh, the frontline folks that are working with people, um, but you can do it. So we just kind of wanted to open up here, wondering what types of health reference questions can you remember a patron asking in your library? Um, so if somebody has one they wanted to share in the chat, go ahead and do that. And then how well would you rate your ability to answer that question? So you can rate yourself one being low, five being high, um, just right after you say what somebody might have asked. Yeah, so go ahead, sure. and the, yeah, go ahead and type in the questions section, anybody, if you've mm -hmm. had any sort of these kind of issues you've been un unsure about what to do or um, something you know people so, are asking about. While people are thinking, I'm gonna share a couple that, that I've had. Um, so one of the questions that I got recently was the person came in asking for books about Tai Chi, but after talking with them a little bit, really what this individual wanted is they wanted to um, advance their ability to uh, be more balanced. They, they wanted balance exercises. And somebody had told them Tai Chi is a good way to you know, to uh, work on your balance, and it is. Um, but there are some great resources I was able to find that have linked up to some YouTube videos that are from a trusted medical source showing some simple balance exercises that someone can just do with a chair in their living room. Um, and then another one I had that I get a lot is like, well, I want to find a doctor, doctor's office. How do I know if that doctor is any good? Um, and so I, I have a reference for that that I'll show people too. Um, so did anyone share any questions? No, it doesn't look like anybody had any thoughts about it. Anybody wondering like if there is questions you're uh, concerned you might get? that might be hard to answer and you're hoping to find out more about today not type into the question section of your go to webinar interface if not it's okay i understand that sometimes it's hard to come up with stuff right off the top of your head like that <laughs> no, no problem but for me i know that sometimes some of these questions have been very memorable to me because of the fact that they were may be difficult to answer or I didn't know quite where to turn right away or automatically. Um, so just practicing at this and getting better at it and, and knowing where to go really helps so that your knee-jerk reaction is is a good one. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. And it's one of those things, it's like you're mentioning legal questions and things that you don't know the answers, but you know where to find them. Exactly. And that's okay. You're not necessarily, you know, going to be a medical expert, um, but these right. resources that you and, and Kim are putting together and, and um, other things you've mentioned are, you know, at least you know, wait, I know where to go and get you on the right track. And that's great that you mentioned that because you are not supposed to be a medical expert. So on this slide, I've pointed out um, the Reference and User Services Association, which is a uh, under the ALA, they have provided health and medical reference guidelines that kind of tell you how to how to address these questions and how to do it ethically. Um, and it really gives you a good just guideline to go by when you're trying to answer these questions. And so on the next slide, I have just a little summary of uh, what these say. So first of all, it does show us that there are res responsibilities that we have in the library to provide clear and accurate responses whenever possible, provide aid with finding credible, relevant, and authoritative information, and how to use those resources. Um, and we can provide referrals 
but not recommendations. We don't want to recommend a certain doctor or a certain doctor's office or a certain treatment or anything like that, but you can refer people to other agencies in the community. Um, and we also have a responsibility to provide health programming and outreach and an appropriate collection. So those are things that are part of our responsibilities. Um, the Reference and User Services Association guidelines also tell us that we are not meant to be medical experts and it is okay to tell your patron that our ethical guidelines say that, you know, I'm not an expert. I can't interpret this for you or tell you what it means for you, um, but we can just help you get to it and maybe help people find some things that are written in language that they can understand better. Um, like Kim was mentioning yesterday, people get packets from their doctors of stuff that is very hard to understand what it's saying. So some of what we can do in the library is find uh, credible, relevant, authoritative information sources that are easier to read for them. Uh, so I do encourage folks to uh, look at the RUSA guidelines. They are linked in the toolkit and they really will give you um, a clear understanding of what your role is and what your role is not. And I also want to mention privacy. So these are often um, sensitive issues that people will be talking to you about. Make sure you maintain that person's privacy. And you can also um, go to a more private, you know, corner place in the library to discuss this. You don't, uh, if you are getting the sense that it might be something a little more sensitive. So we're going to start with reliable health websites. So I know that um, my go-to when people used to come in and ask a health question was let's go to the shelf. Let's go see what we have in our, uh, you know, in our 500s over there. And uh, a lot of times there would be really old things, <laughs> unfortunately, which, which isn't great, but it happens. So the rule of thumb for your print is five years, um, but sometimes things are changing so rapidly in some areas that even one to three year old materials are now outdated. Oh. Uh, so what can we offer as a better alternative for folks? So here on this slide, we have some trusted online sources of health information. And if you can start with these, all the guesswork is kind of taken out of it in terms of, should I trust this information? Where is this coming from? Is this any good or not? Um, so if you can encourage uh, your patrons to start with a trusted health resource, that is great. And we'll talk about some ways that you can do that. Like even putting Medline Plus, you know, posters by your computers. Mm -hmm. Or one thing we're trying to do is create a health research computer that has these websites linked on the desktop. And so you could take them to that computer and go directly to one of these websites when somebody asks you a health question so that they're starting in a good place. Um, so I have, I'm gonna... Something like that is good and, and having the signage up too and having that dedicated computer for people who may be, um, uncomfortable even coming to librarian to ask right, the question. Right, right. They can just see there's a sign, there's a, a computer that says health, I can just go there myself and it's right there. They don't have to like, yeah, come up. To I can't wait till we have our, our They might be an embarrassing question or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I really like Medline Plus because it is really based for a consumer. It is yeah. for everyday people. So the difference between say like Medline Plus and someone who may not be familiar with PubMed PubMed is research world. So if you're looking for somebody who is trying to take their consumer information and go, okay, I need more really hardcore information to really look, what are the studies out there? The doctor's given me this thing. How do I look more into it? And you need to dive into some of that research level. That's what PubMed is for. But general, everyday, very consumer-friendly information, Medline Plus is my go-to spot. I'm going to jump out for a second and show a couple things. 
again, in the toolkit. Everything's in the toolkit. <laughs> um, so the first thing I want to show here is from the Medical Library Association. And this is linked out in the toolkit, MLA top health websites. So these are ones that are already vetted by health professionals and health librarians. Um, they divide this into categories for general health, for cancer, um, complementary and integrative medicine, diabetes, mental health, rare diseases, um, LGBTQIA plus resources, and resources for those asking about healthcare and health insurance. And so hopefully um, on your own time, you might be able to just uh, use this list and just start looking at these websites, seeing what's available on them. When I had the customer asking about balance exercises, I was able to use uh, this one, the National Institute on Aging, and that's where I found they had this list of videos and um, exercises for for balance. And so that was really easy to do. Um, so use this list. It's linked in the toolkit. And then I wanted to just briefly also show Medline. So I know a lot of people know about Medline, but sometimes we don't often, you know, really go out and, and see what's all out there. So there are over a thousand health topics that this website covers. So it's got a lot and pretty much anything people would be asking about is probably on here. Um, videos are really great resource too, because sometimes things are just un easier to understand when you watch a video. Um, I have a customer in, customer in my library that doesn't speak very uh, much English, but he loves to watch videos on like repairing his car and stuff like that. It helps him understand so he can understand the video without understanding the language. And that's often the case for people. Um, so there are lots of videos and tools and then also just going to point out if you have customers who are needing health information in other languages there's a link right at the bottom of the home page of medline plus and there are a lot of languages represented here and you can also um, browse that information by topic too. So if I were to go to acne, then you can see, you know, which things are available in other languages related to acne. Um, so that's a, a really good resource if you have customers who don't speak English. All right, go back to my slide here. Thank you for bearing with me. I know I'm going to go in and out of the slides quite a bit, but I want to show some of this this real stuff. <laughs> um, I also wanted to point out the Merck manual. Uh, that one is really cool. Here, I'm going to show it because it's cool. If you haven't seen that, oh, and I don't have it up. It's bookmarked. Sorry about this here. I knew this would happen at one point because I have so many things. There it is. I just want to show it because it is really nicely laid out for people. Um, and the Merck manual is something that you may have like a hard copy of. It's kind of expensive, um, but now they put the whole thing on the internet and it's free on the internet. And I like it because it has a symptom uh, kind of a symptom finder and people are always looking for symptom finders and mm. many of them are not uh, not very <laughs> credible in my opinion and like really lead people down bad rabbit holes um, so I I would encourage people to use this if they're wanting to uh, do some symptom finding yeah that, I think this is one of the things you know many people say you know just google something and, and what you know what comes up will be great health related things are one of those things you 
don't want to just Google. <laughs> and right. I, I think it's great. There is these free resources that are out there if you just go to the right ones with the authoritative, correct, good info. Yeah. So, and that's what we're going to touch on now because most of your customers are probably going to go out and just Google, Google something. And we're going <laughs> right. to show a little example here in a second of what happens when you do that. Um, so Kim, do you want to talk about evaluating online health information? How can we tell if it's something we should we should look at? Because I'm just as guilty as everybody else. And the first thing I do is go to Google and I work at a medical center and I still Google everything. And so one of the things that we really want to help our patrons understand, especially myself, even looking at websites, trying to go, okay, what am I getting? What is this really looking like? Is looking at these the a b c and d's of everything that goes with that website who wrote it where are they from what is their backing what is their background do you know can you find that um the bias side of it where are what is their motivation for doing the site are they there to make money are they there to provide information are they selling a product um how current is it that's a really big piece because as we were saying Stuff that is anywhere from a year to three years might be out of date already, depending on what it is. And then where are their sources? Where are they getting their information from? Now, the CDC, I don't normally question what they do because it's the CDC, but we know them to be a reliable source. So these are some of the things that we want to encourage our patrons to taking a look at. And then also, in addition to that, I always want to encourage my patrons and anybody that I talk to is what information is that website requesting from you? Do they need your name? Do they need your address? Why would they ask for a credit card? There's you're looking for health information. They shouldn't be a need for health information to be having to provide a credit card or a debit card information. Um, what are they going to do? And if you do share your information, how do you know what they're going to do with it? And so those are things that I always want to talk to people about when they are looking at those online health resources to make sure they're getting to something that was is actually going to be helpful to them. Mm -hmm. And in the toolkit, there's some uh, kind of like checklist little posters you could put out by a computer that points this out. It's always nice when you're working with a customer if you can point to something on the wall like, oh, we have this, and we can see maybe this isn't the greatest website that we should look at for this issue. Let's try a, a better one that's recommended by medical professionals. Um, so Kim and I did a little experiment here, and I wanna show this just because it kind of hones in on this point here. So we did a quick search um, of heart attack info. So I just went and searched that. And then the first website that you come to is this one, heartattackfaq.com is right at the top. Hmm. And so as someone who has family members who have had a heart attack, this would be information I would look at as a consumer. And I would go, okay, I've, we've been down the road, we've had a heart attack, my life has now been shook up, what should I do? And this website looks really good. Okay, you've just had a heart attack. Here's what I should expect. Month one, month three, month six. And I, as someone who's taking care of a heart patient is like, oh, uh, this is what I need. This is what I could use. And then we get down to here. And now all of a sudden they're wanting to connect with us and send us information. Mm -hmm. They want my personal information and everything with it so they could send me something. But then I'm like, this is where we were talking about how do you evaluate those websites? Because especially when people are like for a heart attack, it's usually a pretty traumatic thing for a family to go through something like that. So they're searching for whatever they can and we get to the bottom and who is presenting the information? And the it, other thing I want to, oh, you Melody, can go to it and it brings you to this. Oh, you want to go back? No, well, I will in a second. So what really caught my eye is right there on the right side. So here's what we think is health information, right? Because it looks really good. But in this little box of text, all the information contained in this website is for informational purposes only and not medical advice. Okay, so that should be a warning flag right there. It's <laughs> considered an endorsement of content. It is concrete, you know, all of the readers are encouraged to consult other sources. 
So those are that kind of the things that pop a red flag. And then Melanie, can you switch over to that, the contact information on the company? So this is what happens when we go to contact us and we can mm -hmm. see Investor all kinds business. of yeah. mm -hmm. products. <laughs> So these are the things that we kind of want to make sure that we're talking with any all of our patrons as they're going through and evaluating a website because this right here is not what i would then be as my first line of information especially for a patient as they're moving forward right so that i just think provides us kind of a poignant example of what your what your patrons are often seeing um, when they kind of do this on their own um, and that's going to be happening all the time and you know they're susceptible to paying for things to paying lots of money for things that they might think will help them um, so use those trusted websites I encourage you to go out and look at lots of them they're so good you'll be really encouraged when you start to look at them to know that you have a place to find trusted health information. But um, if your customers are anything like mine, we always have people that just want to take a book home. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so it's hard to get uh, you know, people to, to go to a website sometimes. Um, a lot of times I'll offer it to people and they'll just say, no, nah, I don't really, I just want a book. Um, so here's some resources for you if you want to order print for your library. Um, these are two lists that are vetted by medical librarians for good print materials to order. So that way you don't have to guess if this book is any good or not. Um, it, that work has been done for you. Um, so the consumer, um, consumer and patient health information or consumer and patient health information services organization has a good reads list so this will link out to that and then Kiara Comfort provided this really great Google Doc and it's in the toolkit and it is um, a bunch of books that you can order for your library it has their ISBN number and their you know price title author um, and it's divided into topics so you can look at general health, alternative and complementary medicine. So Kiara has already done this work for you. So if you're gonna be ordering print or you wanna focus on a certain issue and ordering some print materials, this is a great place to go. And it's divided both by subject and title. And that's linked out um, in the toolkit for you, it's there. So that's great. That's something our medical librarian just provided for us here. And then also a new um, thing that's kind of been coming out and growing is graphic medicine, um, which I'm really excited about. They're graphic novels that have great health information. And that just kind of ex can expand health information to a different demographic, um, different types of readers. And so you can go out and look at their website too for lots of ideas on uh, graphic novels to order that are related to medicine. I read A Shot in the Arm and it was great. I love it. It's my new favorite book. So sometimes, um, you know, it's expensive to, to buy print materials and it may be difficult to get somebody to a computer. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about are like things that you can either print or order for free for your library um, that contain health information. So uh, I do have a lot of customers. They might have a high school education or less and they do not know how to use the internet. Mm -hmm. And they don't really use the internet. And sometimes these these are young folks too. Um, so not everybody is going to want to go online. Um, so some more ways that you can get printed materials like brochures, um, 
handouts, that kind of thing. Um, I will show you in the toolkit. Um, but I have this slide because when I first started this whole project, what I wanted to do was envision where libraries could have a lot of different really like brochures on health issues so that if somebody asked about that, you might be able to send them with a brochure. Um, and when people encounter health information unexpectedly, they get an emotional response. Um, it's something that kind of feels like, oh, like this is meant for me. I, I needed this information and then here it is. Um, so that serendipitous moment when you kind of encounter health information can really open up your, your life to um, new information and new knowledge that you, you never knew about before. And so that was kind of my inspiration for this whole thing. And hopefully when people get this information, they'll pass it around. It'll end up on a coffee table and four or five people might look at it. So that's the power of those print materials that I like so much. Um, so like at my library, we just took where we have all the pamphlets and stuff, and we just made a section that's community and health pamphlets. Um, we've collected some of these from local organizations that gave them to us. And some of them um, I've been able to, to get from the sources that I'm gonna show you. I'm going to go out to the toolkit here. So in the toolkit, I have a bunch of where you can get free health information like brochures and things like that. I'm going to wait for this to load for just a second. I apologize. While that's loading, I'll just go to the first one as I have it bookmarked. This is called CDC Info On Demand. Nice. And you can order any of the CDC's publications. There are limits on how many you can order for free. Um, usually it's 25 on a brochure, sometimes it's 10 posters, or sometimes just one, like they have large poster size things. And on their order form, you can divide it by different issues that you want posters of, or even languages and type of material. Nice. Um, the <clears throat> colorectal cancer screening is a new campaign. And so their brochures are like really new and nice looking. Um, and you can order 25 brochures for free on colorectal cancer screening. You can also order like posters, bookmarks, all sorts of stuff. And all of these, of course, are vetted by the CDC, so you know that they're, uh, you know, pretty reliable. Um, and you can order that stuff and get it into your library. Also in the toolkit, there's a bunch more. So this is under free materials to print, download, and order. Um, I do love that colorectal cancer screening campaign. That's been really big, like the NFL has been pushing it. Yeah. Um, so that would be a great thing to have in your library. Also, when we were looking before at Medline Plus, a lot of the uh, topics have like a PDF that go with it. And that PDF is printable and it's free. Mm -hmm. And you could, um, you know, print some of those off and make them available as handouts for people to take. Um, maybe even, you know, swapping those out every couple months, put out four new ones for people to take or something like that. So those are free. Um, there's the Nebraska quit line in English and Spanish. You can get posters, you can get brochures for that. Suicide prevention has posters and wallet size cards. We've had those up in our library. Um, no stroke in English and Spanish. So all of these are available for you to, to go get, to print for free. Um, there's also some like signs for Medline Plus that you could put next to computers and say, you know, looking for health information, start here or something like that. Um, so those are all a bunch of printables that you can get and I did want to mention that 
we have some funds available in the grant. So if any of you here today um, didn't want to absorb the cost of printing something, um, you could email me with your request for what you want, and I and I would be able to print it for you and send it to you um, using the grant. Yeah, I saw that when I when you sent me the link to the to that, and I clicked on you know, opened it up. I thought that was a really great um, service. Yeah, that you have money that can, they can use for that. And you know, on the CDC website, so and the Medical Library Association and the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, they all have so many um, campaigns where often on that campaign, they're gonna have like a, a slide that you can use if you do slides in your library. Um, they're gonna have like a social media post that you can put up. Nice. And so all of those are things that you can just absorb for free and, and use you know, as you want to. Let me go back to my slides here. I'll show you a couple other um, displays that we did. So with those free printable things that we found, you can make displays. Um, and on the toolkit, it talks about like monthly topics or, or recognized um, uh, weeks for different health issues. So you could always make a display based on one of those. Here's a mental health awareness week display. Um, using some of the information that can be freely printed. Some of these I pulled off Pinterest from, you know, librarians that that post their their displays. Um, some of them are from our library. I like this one because it has brochures and print materials and a QR code. Um, so all kinds of things to reach people in different ways, all in one display, which I like. Just I think it's important to realize that different people that you're helping are going to want the resources in a different format. You know, they want the book, they want the news, the little brochure, um, or right. they do want to take their phone and do that QR code and go that way. Right. Oh, and I'm sorry, I'm not even on. I'm not even on the slideshow. I apologize. <laughs> um, so. This was one, this was just really simple. You know, we just had a couple little bits of information about this, but somebody, I bet a lot of people don't know the term neurodiversity. Learning that new term might really change the way a person thinks about themselves. And then to have resources from the library to help you go a little further on it. So it doesn't have to be hard. Um, you can do very small and simple things. Um, to expand the health information that people are seeing in your library from day to day. We did a transgender day of visibility display just recently, um, and it had information on like what gender identity is and what that means. Mm -hmm. And I think this was a good display, not so much um, for necessarily transgender individuals, but more um, not transgender individuals who uh, might have a better understanding of, of what, what that means by seeing the display. And so far, we haven't had any complaints or issues with having that display out. It's gone just fine. So, so we don't have a ton of time left, so I'm going to briefly just go over the rest of what's available to you uh, in this toolkit because there is a lot more. Um, but remember that you can reach out to your local health department or reach out to other organizations in your community because they might give you print materials. They might give you brochures and, and handouts and things that, that you can have in your library. Um, we contacted uh, our Asian Cultural Heritage Center here in Lincoln and they gave us uh, some materials that were written in other languages. And I've put them out, but I don't, they're not like going like hotcakes, but they're there if we need them, so. And then a little bit of what's left in here is just a lot of resources for you on developing um, programs and 
just looking at other um, trainings and resources. Most programs that happen in libraries related to health happen through partnerships. So a lot of times you don't have to really do anything special other than just be what you are. Um, libraries are trusted places and they're hubs. And sometimes that's all that's needed for health programming to be successful. So if you can bring in the expert, the medical expert or the physical education expert, whatever it is, um, all you have to do really is be a space and be a hub. And so for example, um, I was able to partner with the Game and Parks Commission and we did a virtual program on uh, community science activities where people can go out in the community and participate in real science and data that's trying to be collected. And so that was something that, you know, we got together and we're able to offer that program and it benefited them and us. And now we're working with Game and Parks and we're a sponsor for the City Nature Challenge every year. So that was an ongoing um, partnership. And these are two of my favorite resources for if you're wanting to develop programs in your library. So Noah Lenstra, um, you may have heard of him. He's done a whole bunch of stuff with Let's Move in libraries. Yes, this, he's been on Encompass Live a bunch of times too. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Uh, I love this webinar um, that I have linked here in the slide on Let's Move in libraries. So many ideas for for expanding you know, movement programs and, and just even incorporating movement into existing programs. And he just makes it so easy when you watch that webinar. Um, and then my other favorite one here is Public Libraries and Public Health Partners for Community Health. And they have such cool examples of programs that people have done in their library. So I'm just gonna go to their slides just real briefly here. This was a, a library, uh, Lee County Public Library. They made this whole health center in their library annex building where they bring in people to like sign them up for Medicaid. They have all these health resources. They do like food giveaways. Um, and they even were able to obtain like vouchers for people to get free food. It was just, they have done some amazing stuff with their partnerships in their community health hub. Um, some libraries uh, going further to offer telehealth. Mm -hmm. And that's a big one. Um, Krista pointed out that some libraries uh, applied for grants through Nebraska Library Commission to uh, get little telehealth kiosks built. Yeah, in like their that one there. Yep. I mean, that's not one of our libraries, but <laughs> Yes, um, there are these little module rooms that are, that one's like size of like, like two phone booths or a single phone booth, you can get smaller ones. Um, we provided grants to some libraries to do that. You don't have a separate meeting room. We don't have a, a private space for someone to go to, to do their telehealth um, meetings they may be doing with their doctors. Um, it also could be used, when you were talking about earlier, um, we were talking about if you're trying to answer someone, you'd mentioned you'd take them to a private place, someone somewhere more private in the library to answer someone's question. You, as a librarian, could use one of your rooms like this if you get one of them. Yeah, so um, that just kind of brings me back to my next point, which is just that there is, we'll skip that one for now. And go on. There is a lot of funding resources um, available to you too. So the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, you can apply for a grant if there's a project uh, that you want to do. And even the Nebraska Library Commission Library Improvement Grants have been help, have been you know used for health issues um, so all of this stuff that we looked at today um, is all in the toolkit there's links to everything we went over all the health websites all the free printables um, all of the webinars that are going to give you more information 
Um, there's a campaign called Help Happens in Libraries, and that was also an IMLS funded uh, initiative. And I encourage folks to go out to Help Happens in Libraries. Uh, they have resources there to learn so much more about health information. Um, it's just such a good resource and, and so much good stuff in there. So that is kind of where we're at with this. Um, just a couple future things that we're doing. Kim and I will be going to the Medical Library Association Conference. Cool. Um, and uh, we are uh, in my library working together to create a proposal to the NLA to create a health and libraries interest group in nice. the NLA. And then um, also working on partnerships to like be able to order bulk printed health materials that we could distribute to libraries. So that's mm -hmm. kind of my next endeavor. And then we're working on making our health kiosk uh, computer uh, for health research as well. So those are some of our little future projects. <laughs> Always something new. Does anybody right. have any questions or closing um, comments that they'd like to share? Yeah, let's see if anybody does have any questions. Anything you want to ask of Melanie or Kim before we wrap up for today, type into your uh, GoToWebinar question section. Um, nobody had any questions while you were talking. That's okay. Sometimes it's just a lot of good information and resources people are going to look at, I think. <laughs> um, but go ahead and type in something if you want to ask anything or anything you want to share, anything you've done at your library uh, that might be helpful to other people. Um, I think this is a great session. Definitely, I was glad to have both of you on to share about this. This is something that is, it comes up every now and then, you know, if a library is saying, I don't know what to do. What, you know, I, I don't know anything about health and how do I, how do I even help <laughs> someone get where they need to go? Yeah. And I think we always need a reminder there are so many free places. And every time we do one of these, someone says, oh, I didn't know about that one. Um, and I'm so glad, you know, you shared it. So. Um, uh, we've got such some comments coming in. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, excellent information. Um, don't want to get, wait to go and look through the toolkit that you have there. We will have the link to that, yep, available to you all to, to use um, afterwards. Great. Well, I so appreciate the opportunity to, um, to share it. Um, it's been really great just like gathering all the resources and we do need reminders because we always have new staff coming into our libraries and mm -hmm. you know things are changing all the time so even though uh, health and libraries is not a new topic it's also a topic that's not going away um, mm -hmm. so we always can use um, more training and more information just to stay abreast on what's going on Mm -hmm. um, so also just educate yourself on health issues, be looking at those websites, you know, you can follow the CDC on Twitter to stay up to date on things mm -hmm. because things are always changing. <laughs> oh yeah, nothing is static. <laughs> All right, it doesn't look like anyone, um, uh, let's see, we do, okay, question to just come in here. Um, someone wants to know, does someone produce the ABCD posters that you suggested you put next to the computer for research? Um, no, but in the toolkit, there's a similar one um, that's in a PDF format, and it's under evaluating health information, I think. Um, so under that heading, there's one that you can print that's a poster that you can put up. It's it's not exactly A, B, C, D, but it's similar. It's like in a checklist format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, oh gosh, I'd have to look at it to see who produced it. <laughs> it was, I think it's an MLA resource, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. It is a I trust. Just to, in the questions out to everyone um, responding to this person's question about well, the link that you had sent of to the Google Docs toolkit. So if anyone wants to go and look at it right away, it's right there. Um, but it will be available on the uh, session page for today's show and on the archive page too. Uh, so I'll get those um, added there so you'll have access to that whole document.
We'll also post um, in the toolkit, there's like a feedback form. So if there is um, feedback that you want to provide, or if you know of a resource I should add to that toolkit, please let me know. Um, so you can use that feedback form um, that's linked in the toolkit if you have some feedback to provide. Yeah, because if there there might be something that um and now is this toolkit, you know, it says in our description here um that it's for Nebraska Public Libraries, but it's resources that could anyone could use, correct? Right. I mean, Just a few of them are, you know, Nebraska um oriented, like the Nebraska quit line, uh or you know, Kiara's list of uh of print materials to order i mean anyone could use that but it just it did come from a nebraska librarian um so it's just slightly localized but really i think most things in there could be used by any anybody in any but any library okay All right. They said, okay, thank you so much. Great. There are um, free webinars through the NNLM that are virtual programs that are all completely done and everything um, that you can just, you know, link to through your website or your Facebook page and the, the program, you don't have to do anything. It just links people to it. Um, so there are free virtual programs through the NNLM mm -hmm. and they will send you a media kit. Like if you wanted posters and things to put out to promote it, you could. Um, nice. And that's just if you're ever like, oh, I need a, a program. I need some a virtual program to plug into this month. I, I don't have anything, you know, do it. Do a free health program that's totally, you know, done for you. You literally don't have to do anything <laughs> except for just link to it. And um, send people and, to it when it happens. Nice. Yep. Yeah, and there's there's a link to that in the toolkit where those free virtual programs are through the NNLM. And it's also on one of the slides here that you can link back out to it. So if you save these slides, a lot of the slides have all the links in there too. I've kind right. of embedded them. Right. And I should mention, we talked about the toolkit, but also the slide presentation will be available with the recording afterwards as well. Yep. Yeah, and it has pretty much all the links to. I, I got very link happy with this. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that's good. You you talk about all these different, for so many resources, and we do need to look. How do I get to them easily? And um, yeah, click, be having those clicks there is the easiest way, definitely. Yeah, I think it just makes it easy. So. Awesome. All right. Well, it doesn't look like any other uh, desperate questions came in. So I think we will um, wrap up for today's show. Thank you, everybody, for being here with us. Thank you so much, Melanie and Kim. This is great resources, great information, of course. Um, and hopefully we'll get lots more uh, libraries feeling, um, library staff feeling more um, comfortable dealing with these kind of questions. Uh, they have these resources. Yeah. I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen here so I can wrap up and show you everything's a be. So here's the session page for today's show. Um, I will be adding um, the link to the toolkit that's mentioned here in the description. Um, I have that up here. So I have that in the Google Docs. So we'll have a link to that in the archive when we get that posted. Uh, our archives are here on our main page. Uh, if you just if you use your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, the only thing you'll come up with is our show. Nobody else is allowed to use that name. <laughs> and here's our here's our, our coming upcoming shows. But then right underneath there is a link to our archives. Most recent ones are at the top of the page. So today's um, show will be up here. Uh, should be done and ready by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, uh, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and registered for, for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is available. Uh, we also push it out onto our social media. We do have a Facebook page that we link to from everywhere. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Reminders go out. Here's a reminder to log in today's show, information about our presenters, um, and then here we go. 
the recording of last week's. Um, we also do Twitter, Instagram, I'm not sure where else. We have a little hashtag and comp live, a little abbreviation for the show, so you can look for us out elsewhere using that. Uh, while we're here on the recordings, we were talking about previous shows that are done. Um, you can search our archives. There's a search feature here. You can search the whole show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. Um, as Melanie was talking about, you need to have up-to-date information about some things. Um, but this is the full show archive going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So um, there's a lot of old, I'm not gonna scroll all the way down to this this page, it's huge. But um, so just pay attention to the original broadcast date whenever you do watch something. Uh, some of the shows will stand, the content will stand the test of time, still be good, you know, useful information, but some things may change, resources and services may change, links may no longer work, products have, may have either changed drastically or no longer exist at all. Um, so uh, just pay attention to that. And I mentioned, I'm gonna see if I can have this come up with, um, yeah, there we go. You mentioned Noah Lundstra. We, we've had him on the show twice in the last couple of years about Feeding America, Garden Seed Exchanges, Summer Meals and More, and how to add movement to library programming. So if you wanna learn more about that from Noah himself, he's been on the show a couple of times. There we go, all right. So that'll wrap it up for today's show. Um, Thank you everyone for being here, of course. Thank you, um, Melanie and Kim. This is great. Um, I hope you'll join us, everyone will sign up for it um, on our future shows. On uh, next week's show, we'll be talking about tweaking your library social media. Uh, we've been talking about how to share things, though. So this would be a good um, presentation. Uh, Suzanne McCauley is from the Pioneer Library System in New York, and she is going to be um, giving us some tips and tricks on how to use uh, social media really well to promote our library services. So hopefully you'll join us for that show or any of our other upcoming shows we have. We're getting our May dates booked here, as you can see. So keep an eye on our schedule here for um, what our other topics may be coming up in the month of May. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Melanie. This is great. And hope we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yeah.